this is gonna. I'm. I'm. Hey. <laughs> Were you recording that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can start now. Oh yeah. It's good to go. Yeah, yeah. Nothing stopping us. Nothing stopping us. I don't feel like doing it anymore. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Today is a video from the Geneva Motor Show, obviously. I'm stating the obvious, aren't I? We're making a video on supercars. Ooh, so like the best supercars. <laughs> what are the best supercars of the Geneva Motor Show this year? We're gonna be looking at the obvious ones, the F8 Tributo, the Evo Spider, the new Porsche, um, but we're kicking it off with, uh, <laughs> hello mate. Hey. Ooh, this is going really well. Kicking it off with this new Genetta. Now, Janetta, I would love to tell you the model name, but they haven't released it yet. Janetta, very successful in racing. They make Le Mans cars, LMP3 cars, they make some incredible race cars, and they've now decided to take that to the road and bring effectively a LMP3 car to the road. So that's where this new Janetta, whatever it will be called <laughs> once they release it, is for. This is a very limited production car, 20 of them in the world. Um, yeah, 20. No. Yeah, I know you're shocked, aren't you? I really wanted one. You really wanted one? You can't get one. Actually, you could. They've sold 14 of them thus far. Oh. Six left. Yeah, but they're just on the... Well, the, the way they're saying it's priced is under 400 grand. Presumably, that means it's over 350. It's expensive, basically. But it's kind of like Pista Perta money when you think about it. Only 20 in the world. Uh, V8, over 600 horsepower. And... You guys are probably looking at the interior and stuff now. It is a pure thoroughbred race car, finished in like full carbon fiber. It is an absolute animal. It's a bit of a different supercar. Thought I'd show it to you there. Supercar, obviously, because it's not in the hypercar category. It's under a million quid. Um, but it is, I think, a very, very cool car and exciting to see Janetta making road cars again because they used to back in the day. Let's go to the next car. See, once I get into it, you know, just need to get started. It's like, just you go. need to get the just ball roll all right for me. The Ginetta is like a very, very niche car, right? Very limited production and very expensive. This is almost the opposite. Very high production car that costs a lot less. This is the new Porsche 992 convertible cabriolet. Now, the 992, you guys know the differences on it. Many really cool, I think it looks fantastic. It's got wider arches now as standard, whereas before it used to only be on the four wheel drive versions. There is space for there to be a hybrid included in it. The interior is brand new. It's a very exciting car. Now, the Cabriolet version we all knew was coming has finally landed. It is a new car. I classify it as a supercar person because I think they're awesome. And with them being over like 100 grand once you spec them properly, that qualifies it for me. I think it looks great in this color, and it's just a quick stop off here to show you one of the new cars, the Porsche Cabriolet. The brand new AMG GTR Roadster. This car kind of speaks for itself, but it's very exciting as well. So it's basically exactly the same as the AMG GTR Coupe. Um, same engine, the same aero package, it's even still got the same fixed rear spoiler, which you don't see on many convertible versions of hardcore cars. So it's the track version of the Ladies AMG and GTC, and GTS, or GT, and basically it's a beast. It's a total, total animal. Now, in this color, it actually looks really cool, the matte blue, and they've done a few different things inside, like they've you know, kept it with the facelift. So it's got the facelift in front, the facelifted interior, and the screen um, that you see on the new GTRs has just been brought over to this Roadster version. Now, what's interesting is that it's gonna be limited to 750 units worldwide. So quite a rare car. I mean, to give you an idea, that's even more rare than the Porsche 991 Speedster. I think it's awesome. Let me know what you guys think. And it's obviously competing with the likes of Ferrari and Lamborghini and all those guys. Why don't we actually go see some of their new cars now too. Hey. Ooh. A supercar I did not expect to be talking to you about today was a new Aston Martin Vanquish, but a surprise that they happen to reveal the car right now. You can maybe tell I'm looking around because people keep on basically nearly walking into me. Ooh. But 
this behind me is a concept car, the Vanquish Vision, for what will become the new Vanquish in a few years, which you may notice looks completely different from the current one. That's because it is going in the following the new direction of Aston Martin in building mid-engine cars. So there's the 003, but basically that was to bridge the gap between the Valkyrie and this, the new Vanquish, which is taking technology down from the Valkyrie. Don't know what engine it will have for sure yet. We don't know if it will be hybrid assisted. We don't know too much information about it, but I thought it'd be a shame not to put it in this video. This is the new future Aston Martin. Cool. This is the Lamborghini SVJ convertible roadster. So effectively, here's what's happened with the Aventador lifetime. There was a Aventador, the stock LP700-4. Then they went up to an Aventador SV, which was a 750. Then went to an Aventador S, which is just a bit better of the original Aventador. And now the SVJ, which has a little bit more power than the SV and is produced in slightly higher numbers. So the SVJ Coupe, was 900 units worldwide. The SVJ Roadster is 100 less of those, so 800 units worldwide. It will be 63 of the 63 editions, um, which are going to be quite rare. And as you can tell behind me, you can also sort of modify it through the Lamborghini Ad Personum program quite a bit. This car has a special one-off color, um, and I think personally looks fantastic. The SVJ Roadster is the most track focused SV they've got. They've introduced new things like rear wheel steer um, and they sort of updated just, it's still the same gearbox but they've updated so that the computer behind it for it to be a bit quicker, a bit more efficient and a bit more aggressive. It's a very exciting new supercar on the market as well. Behind me is an extremely bright Italian supercar. This is the brand new Hurricane Evo Spider. So, Hurricane Evo, you guys know, is a facelifted, kind of a sh second lifetime to the Hurricane. So, the Evo is effectively, so it's rebodied. It has the same engine, same gearbox, but a bit more power. It's 630 horsepower rather than the usual 610 that you had in the Hurricane. They've changed a lot of technical things to make it handle better from electrical systems, but also it has five times more downforce than the normal Hurricane Spider. Now, not limited, good looking car, fairly expensive, exciting supercar, and it's gonna be competing with the likes of the 720S Spider, and now the F8 Tributo Spider when that comes out, which you should probably go and see now. Join me for the last car in the supercar sort of segment. It is, of course, the Ferrari F8 Tributo. So this is a replacement, a completely new model to the 488 GTB, which you guys know and love very well. And it is basically a response to the 720S. Ferrari had to kind of step up their game, and they have done just that. I think the car looks absolutely stunning. It has some incredible power figures. It is the quickest mid-engine V8 Ferrari they have ever made. It's got well over 700 horsepower and basically rivals the 720S and hopefully will be able to also potentially keep up with the 720 whatever LT will be, but it also rivals the Performante and all that jazz. They have changed a lot to the exterior. Let me show you actually. Also, if you're wondering where Cole is and why this is filmed in a different style, that's, uh, that's because Cole loves this car so much that if he came on the stand, he would never leave, so I thought I'd leave him behind. It's got the 812 like rear uh, lights. It's got this very cool, very intricately designed wing, which has air intakes, puts the air under for the downforce, and has all these different sort of um, utilities. It's got the exhaust then there, kind of like on the pista, the beautiful rims, and this gorgeous color, obviously. So this car still uses the twin turbo V8 sort of platform and the double clutch gearbox. So in a way, it is very similar to the 488. Until we drive it, we can't know completely. There are loads of technical things, which I won't bore you with because the Shmi 150 video is for that if you want to know all the technical stuff. Um, but it, the way it looks, the way I assume it will feel is like a just much, much newer, much more competent version of the 488 and it will rival 
a 488 Pista, which is mad because it's the fastest they sort of brought cars around Ferrari. They usually leave it a lot longer between revealing the track version and then the whole new model. I presume that is purely, as I said, because of what McLaren are doing. They're making Ferrari raise the bar and it's hugely exciting. Anyways, no better way to end this supercar sort of series than with the supercar everybody's talking about, the F8 Tributo. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.